Good morning students. Today I am going to deal with the chapter A Sunny Morning from your Springs textbook. A Sunny Morning is the fifth chapter in your textbook and it is a comedy in one act. It is a one act play written by Quintero Brothers. Seraphim Alvarez Quintero and Joaquin Alvarez Quintero are known as the golden boys of the Spanish theatre. They are the ones who started the revival of Spanish theatre. Together, both of them have written more than 200 plays and of which a sunny morning stands part. It's a beautiful play, a small play, which depicts the characters of Don Gonzalo and Donna Laura, two old people in their 70s, meeting at a park. We have four characters in the play. I've written it here, Donna Laura, Petra, her maid, Don Gonzalo, and Manito, his servant. Now, only four characters are there, and Donna Laura and Don Gonzalo play the role of the hero and heroine in this small comedy. Don is a respectful title in Spanish. Uh, it is equivalent to Mr. and Donna is equivalent to Mrs. So when you say Don Gonzalo, it means Mr. Gonzalo. Gonzalo is the first name and Donna Laura means Mrs. Laura. Laura is the first name. Usually Don and D Donna are used with the first names of the people. Now it's a very uh, important chapter. You may expect questions for 11 marks from this particular chapter. One mark question, four mark question and a six mark question come from this chapter. You may get questions uh, of 11 marks from this chapter, a sunny morning. So I request all of you to understand this video, understand the concept well and make a note of all important points. Let's see the background of the play. A sunny morning in a retired corner of a park in Madrid. So the play is set in a park in Madrid. Madrid is, a, um, is the capital of Spain. So it's a Spanish play and uh, the play is set in a park. Autumn, a bench I tread. Now the title A Sunny Morning is related to the climate autumn the season is autumn now what's the speciality of autumn season autumn season comes between summer and winter it follows the summer season so the beginning days of the autumn season usually would be filled with sunlight it would be sunny days and towards the end you find cold winter start setting in remember the poem written by Shelley Aut to autumn. Autumn is the harbinger of winter season as well. So the background of the play tells us that it is a sunny morning during autumn season. Now sunny morning is very important. Sun is a symbol of life. Sun provides you light. Sun provides you warmth and towards the end of your life when you are old you usually feel more colder than usual. So in that aspect, if it is a sunny morning, all these old people would love to move out of their homes and to uh, be outside to sit and relax in a park. Now, the background is in a park. You find the park is frequented by two sets of people usually. One is children and the other group is elderly people. Now, in most of the parks, seen and around Mysore, if you observe, you find that there will be a children's play area. And especially in the evenings, you find that area is filled with children as well as their 
parents they would enjoy playing in the park especially on sunny evenings or when slight breeze is there now the second set of people who frequents the park is the elderly people you know for them when when you become old you may have lot of people around you may have your children you may have your grandchildren you may have your friends and relatives but most of the time all these people will not have time for you they may not be ready to listen to your speeches they may not be ready to spend time because they are all busy with their lives so on sunny mornings and evenings they would enjoy coming out taking a stroll in the park sitting and relaxing on the benches kept open so remember the play is set in a park in madrid and the weather is so fine a sunny morning in autumn season dona laura a handsome white haired lady of about 70 will find in appearance her bright eyes and entire manner giving evidence that despite her age her mental faculties are unimpaired enters leaning upon the arm of a maid petra in her free hand she carries a parasol which also serves as a cane so as the curtain rises you find dona laura entering now how does she enter shoulders of her maid petra and in the other hand in the free hand she carries a parasol parasol is nothing but an umbrella that old people usually use as a walking stick as well they uh, use parasol as a walking stick as they move on to support them in walking and at times suddenly when it rains uh, or if it is too sunny they can use it as an umbrella as well now as she comes in we understand that she has slight problem in walking uh, that tells us that she is age she is 70 so though 70 she is refined in her appearance well dressed and we understand that she is a lady who is raised well who comes from a very good background and again her mental faculties are unimpaired though she is 70 she is not forgetful she does not have any all her senses are proper and she understand she does not forget anything so we understand that she is very much normal though she is an old woman of 70 So this is the background she comes in and now let's read the dialogues let's read the conversation Dona Laura I am so glad to be here I feared my seat would be occupied what a beautiful morning So as soon as she enters she just observes she looks around the park and then she finds that the bench on the right is vacant She's so happy about it. She says, "I'm so glad to be here. The morning is so fine, uh, and I'm so happy that I'm in the park. And more than I was a little afraid before I started. I thought on sunny mornings usually the park would be full of people, and I thought somebody might have occupied my seat. But I'm so happy that today no one has come and uh, sat there. I am happy about it." The morning is so wonderful so beautiful she says petra the sun is hot so immediately comes a sentence a dialogue from petra it's not as beautiful as you say madam the sun is really hot laura yes you are only 20 so immediately laura says see the problem is with your age you are a young girl of 20 not a no woman like me so you may feel that the sun is hot but for me it's absolutely fine she sits down on the bench oh i feel more tired today than usual so now she takes the bench she sits there and she says i don't know probably we have walked and i'm feeling so tired so let me sit for a while noticing petra who seems impatient So she looks at her maid. Petra is standing there near her, so restless. She does not pay much attention to her mistress. Instead, she is slightly restless. So she looks at her maid and says, "Go, if you wish to chat with your guard." Now I understand your problem. You have somebody waiting for you. 
So if you want to chat with your God, if you want to speak to your God, you please go. You need not wait here, she says. Petra, she is slightly offended by the words of her mistress. So immediately she says, he is not mine, Senora. He belongs to the park. Senora, you are wrong. And Senora is again a respectable title in Spanish language. And uh, uh, it means madam. So madam, you are wrong. He is the keeper of the park. He has got his own duties to do. He won't be waiting for me. He is not mine. She is not ready to accept it. She does not want her mistress to know that she is restless and impatient to chat with him. So she says, it's not mine. Laura, he belongs more to you than he does to the park. You please don't say anything. I understand the things. He will be waiting for you. So more than taking care of his duties as a guard of this park, he will be waiting for you. I understand it very well. So he belongs to you. Go find him. But remain with him calling distance. No problem. I don't have any problem. If you go and speak to him, you go. But please remain somewhere near. Remain within the calling distance. When I call out to you, if I am in need, you should answer. Petra, I see him waiting there for me. So immediately says, see, madam, he's there. So Petra understood that her mistress uh, knows about their relationship. So she says, see, I can see him. He's there. He's waiting for me. Do not remain more than 10 minutes. So she says, everything is fine. You go. But within 10 minutes, you should come back. Very well, senora. Walks toward right. So she says, very well, senora. Madam, thank you. And she just goes out. So a young girl of 20 cannot see the beautiful atmosphere around her. She uh, does not have the mind to uh, watch the weather as well. Her mind is fixed at one point. She has to go and speak to her God, to her lover. Laura, wait a moment. So the Petra is about to exit the stage and Laura calls out and says, wait. What is the senora wish? So Petra is asking, what happened? Anything that you would like me to do for you? She's asking. Give me the bread crumbs. So immediately says, you know, have you forgotten? Usually when you come to the park, you need to hand over the bread crumbs to me. We've forgotten that. I don't know what is the matter with me. So immediately Petra realizes her mistake. So she says, sorry, it's a kind of apology that she offers to her mistress. She says, I'm so sorry and I don't understand what the problem is. I have completely forgotten about the bread crumbs. So usually when the mistress and this maid come to the park and after the mistress is seated, the bread crumbs has to be handed over to her. Petra has forgotten her duty. The mistress reminds her and now uh, she apologizes and now Laura says, smiling, I do. You don't know what your problem is, but I know. I do understand. What's your issue? Your head is where your heart is with the God. So you know what your problem is? Your head is not working properly. Your head is now overpowered by your heart. So it is generally said that heart is the seat of all emotions and brain or head is the seat of all your thoughts. So when your heart functions, when you are filled with emotions like when you are angry, when you are sad, you usually forget the surroundings at times. So Petra has forgotten her duty because her mind is impatiently craving to meet the guard of the park. So you feel with your heart and you think with your brain. So here her heart feels and she has forgotten her thought. Her mind does not work. She has forgotten her duty as a maid. So Laura says, I know your problem. Your head is not functioning. Your heart is functioning now. But don't worry, you give it and you go. Here, Senora, she hands Donna Laura a small bag. It's a Petra by right. So now Petra hands over this breadcrumbs, the bag of breadcrumbs and says, uh, it is here, madam, and she just leaves. So now uh, Donna Laura is all alone in the park or at least on the stage. She is sitting comfortably. Donna Laura 
adios. Adios means goodbye. So she says goodbye to her maid for a little time. Glances towards trees at right. Here they come. So she looks at the trees on the right side and then she's calling out to somebody. She finds someone coming. Here they are coming, she says. They know just when to expect me. You know, they understand. So we understand that there's somebody on the trees. Usually it could be sparrows or pigeons or birds or it could be some uh, monkeys or some uh, animals. So here she says that they are expecting me, I know. She rises, walks toward right, throws three handfuls of breadcrumbs. So she stands up and with little difficulty she moves on to the right side towards the trees. And from the back she takes breadcrumbs. She's just throwing three times. And as she throws, she says, these are for the spriest. Spriest means active ones. Now usually when you throw, when you feed the birds, the active ones would come and pick at that first. So she says, for the lively ones, for the active ones. And now second time she says, these for the gluttons. Gluttons are the fatty ones. So if you want more, if you are very much hungry, again you can have, she says. And these for little ones which are the most persistent. So you know, third time she says, you know, little ones usually would be left behind because they would be at the back uh, in competition, they will not win. So she says, third time she throws and she says, these are the little ones, you please have it. Laughs, she returns to her seat and watches with a pleased expression the pigeons feel. So she has been talking to the pigeons on the trees. As soon as Petra has left, she has looked at the trees and as she started throwing the breadcrumbs, she has observed that the pigeons are down to feed on them. Now she's so happy to see them uh, feeding on the breadcrumbs. There, the big one is always first. I know him by his big head. So she's identifying each and every pigeon in the group. She says the one with the big head, I know him. He always comes first. Whenever I have brought the breadcrumbs, he is the one to eat at first. Now one, now another, now two, now three. That little fellow is the least timid. I believe he would eat from my hand. So now she is observing one by one the pigeons have started coming and they are on the ground feeding on this. So she is saying how many of them have come and she identifies a small uh, pigeon and says he is not at all afraid, he is the least timid, not at all afraid. He may even come and feed from my hand, she says. That one takes his peas and flies up to that branch alone. He is a philosopher. And then she says one pigeon has uh, uh, taken one piece of bread crumb and it, it was on top of the tree. He says he might have been a philosopher, he stands aloof. He's sitting there on top of the tree away from all his friends and relatives. But where do they all come from? It seems as if the news had spread. Ha ha, don't quarrel, there is enough for all. I'll bring more tomorrow. So now she speaks to the pigeons as if she is speaking to human beings, to children. She is wondering where these pigeons have come from. Not many are there. Probably somebody has spread the news among them. There might be a channel which spreads the news about an old woman coming to the park and feeding them. They all have come. And then she says, you know, no need to quarrel next tomorrow when I come, I'll bring more. So this tells us something about this old woman. She speaks to them as if they are her friends, as if they are her companions. Probably the loneliness of her old age has uh, made her find a good companionship in these pigeons. Now one more thing we understand about Donna Laura. She is not a very strict mistress. You just check all the dialogues that or the conversation that happens with uh, Petra. She is quite comfortable. And she does not scold her maid Petra when she forgets her duty. She forgets to hand over the breadcrumbs. She doesn't scold. Instead, she is so understanding. She can understand how a girl of 20 would feel. She understands the love pang, the impatience that Petra has when after she has come to the park. So this is what we understand about Donna Laura at the beginning of the play a sunny morning. 
So, dear students, today I will stop here for the time being. And in the next class, we will see Don Gonzalo and his servant, Vanity. Thank you.